Um, good afternoon. Um, today I came here to uh, share a story that led us to the development of a um, monitoring system here at uh, UMIT project. A few months ago, while I was uh, following the news in the wake of the Arab Spring, mm -hmm. I remember one specific news uh, talking about rallies mm -hmm. happening in Libya that was organized through social networks and um, that um, uh, communication with reporters in that region was compromised due to an internet outage that affected the whole Libyan territory. And by then, um, news came out and people wasn't sure whether there was or not an internet access in the Libyan territory because it's not easy to figure that out. And then I thought, well, where we, we should have a place where we could just go and um, figure if a specific region has got access to the internet or not. But we all know that the internet is not owned by a single individual or organization. It is rather a huge conglomerate of equipments owned by um, public and private companies. And these equipments form a huge peer-to-peer um, -peer network that is the internet. So from that, you can tell how hard it would be uh, to have everybody to agree on a new protocol to allow for this monitoring. Um, since then, I uh, kept seeing similar problems occurring, like when an old lady in Georgia decided to scavenge for copper and broke through a fiber optic cable serving internet to the whole country of Georgia, Armenia, and parts of Azerbaijan, bringing millions offline for five hours. Back in time, we also witnessed the um, massive earthquake in Japan, and several fiber optic cables were broken as well, and uh, connectivity between Asia and North America was compromised, and people was wondering where was the problem and what happened, but you know, once this breaks the news, we do not know what happened. But earthquakes and old ladies scavenging for copper is not the only threat to the internet. Um, we often have individuals um, promoting censorship and throttling um, and compromise internet access, like when a government decides to block a website because they figure that uh, people are using that to discuss about democracy and they want to avoid that from um, spreading and gaining momentum. Or when an internet service provider um, promises to deliver speed but when you access YouTube, for example, they end up de delivering a much poor um, internet connectivity for you. Uh, then I figured that you know there was a time to have um, a worldwide internet connectivity monitor uh, from which people could just you know access the website and figure whether there was internet um, available in a specific region or if there was censoring occurring there and what websites were being uh, censored. But developing a system like that is a long shot. And um, we had to be very uh, creative to overcome all these um, um, issues. And uh, um, so our solution is to um, access, try and access uh, websites from within all regions so that we could figure if they were available or, or not. But accessing all websites from all regions is almost impossible. I know that Google does that, but you know we do not have the same resources. So we uh, wanted to have meaningful um, suggestions of websites because we do not want to look for you know websites that do not have any chance of being censored or blocked at all. And uh, we decided to rely on um, crowd-based solution where people just come to our website and say, well, you know, I think that this website is being blocked, censored, or throttled in a specific region. And we take these suggestions, build up a package and a test, we send to the specific region, our nodes in the region would run the, the tests, return the results to our website, and we would compile um, to show the results in real time and show connectivity issues in that region. Uh, we are also planning to uh, gather suggestions on Twitter because uh, 
people just go to Twitter to complain whenever they have a connectivity issue, if Twitter is not blocked in the region where they live. Um, UMIT is a nonprofit open source um, organization, and we do not um, have a huge budget. We're quite short on that. And um, so we had to rely on uh, help from Google through their Summer of Code um, program this year, where they sponsored um, three amazing students to engage in our cause. And aside help with code, we managed to gain um, help from CrowdSpring, which is an amazing um, company doing some um, good job with uh, crowd um, solutions. They have over 100,000 uh, creatives. And whenever you want to design or writing materials, they provide that. And uh, honestly, we didn't use their services yet because we're focused on uh, delivering our first, uh, first uh, beta release but I'm pretty sure we're going to get a, a very good um, product from them. Um, so uh, it's a bit slow. Um, anyway, so um, in order to avoid us from um, becoming a prey of governments that do not want to have their censorship exposed like that, and also to protect our users' identity, um, we decided to develop a peer-to-peer -peer network that is really robust and relies heavily on cryptography. And that could even send reports through SMS messages or email in case direct access to our website is being blocked. We can also um, use steganography to hide our report inside an image and send this image to our servers, and they would understand and you know, show the status in the website. Um, Open Monitor is a free and open source project. Um, we do not have a stable release right now. We are working very hard to uh, make a beta out of our doors. And I would like to invite everyone here um, to visit our website, subscribe, um, share, and help us leverage this uh, helpful idea. Um, mm -hmm. This link was created specifically for this event, and people would be able to have a, a small preview of what we're um, going to release in a few months. And people who subscribe will also um, be the first to know when we release a version. And uh, thank you for your attention.